Yo brother, it's time for us to start talking the real man. We've been sugarcoating too much, we've got to start calling everything out for what it is. Hey guys, I'm here with an Emotion V13. Now I'm sure a lot of you are surprised uh, to see me with a in motion wheel. Uh, I haven't given them a lot of love in the past, uh, but I'll get into the reasons uh, why in a little bit. But first, a huge shout out to Jason at eWheels who has uh, given me this wheel for evaluation purposes. I mean, just a loner for uh, a week or so. We'll see how long I can uh, manage to keep it. Uh, today is Christmas. Now, I he reached out to me literally a handful of days ago and said, hey, I just got a demo V13 flown in. Would you like to test it? Hmm, sure. <laughs> and uh, he shipped it out to me and um, it, I received it on uh, Christmas Eve yesterday. Now I wasn't home. I was actually out riding my Master Pro in the mountains. Had a beautiful 94 mile ride. Uh, gorgeous weather in Southern California. Yesterday was a high of about, uh, well, I think today was 81. And yesterday was a little cooler, I think about only 80, 79 or 80. <laughs> but I was up in the mountains, uh, max altitude was about, elevation was about 7,000 feet. Lots of snow on the ground. It was uh, definitely really cold up there, but sunny, pleasant, had a great ride. So I came home, this box was waiting for me, this behemoth. Uh, dragged it in here with all my might. <laughs> uh, today's Christmas. I've been doing Christmas things all day, uh, but I finally opened up my schedule tonight. So I'm going to uh, unbox this thing, charge it up, get it ready for some writing, uh, which I'll uh, hopefully be doing uh, tomorrow. And uh, my intention is to uh, just uh, give you my tonight uh, the first part of this video anyway is just giving my uh, raw impressions of the wheel uh, maybe a little configuration on camera um, I'm not I have no intention of taking this uh, wheel apart other guys people are doing that on YouTube I'll let them do that I'm gonna focus on uh, the riding aspects of the wheel I gotta tell you guys this box is huge and uh, I've never, uh, the Master Pro weighed a lot, but this is out of control. Um, my mass, I'm, I'm gonna weigh this once I get it set up, but my Master Pro is coming in at 121 pounds. And uh, at least in this box, it's more than 121 pounds. Now, also, they don't appear to be shipping this in, two, in a dual box like we receive all of our wheels, I mean, this thing came from Tucson. So it didn't come from their warehouse. I don't know, uh, I don't know if this wheel has been actually ridden yet or if I'll be the first one, I will find out shortly. But this box is on its last legs. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna be uh, sending this back to eWheels when I'm done with it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to have a talk with uh, Jason. Manual. Hardware. Interesting uh, bag of hardware you usually don't get with wheels. I'm going to be careful taking this apart so I can put everything back together when I, as I got it. But uh, here's a charger. Everything is looking unused in this box, which is cool. I barely had to use this, uh, <laughs> my knife to get this box open. That's the condition it was in. Ah, makes me a little nervous. Okay, so it's really weird how this box is. 
think it's meant. This is really, this is how it came out from FedEx. So I cut little two pieces of paper. <laughs> uh, okay. Pad, so it looks like I am the first rider of this wheel. I don't know, this, uh, how it's been shipped has me worried <laughs> about how to ship it back, but, uh, it looks like a virgin wheel, which is really cool. All right, let me get this box out of here and uh, show you more about it. And I'm going to weigh this guy, too. Before I put the box away, just point out that the pads are in here. I'm not going to use these pads. I'm going to install some different pads. I'll show you. But in the bottom corner is some hardware. And uh, it was actually, uh, it was wrapped up, but I took the wrapping off. And um, I'll show you what that's all about because uh, there's nothing in the manual about this. All right, let's first talk about this strange hardware that you'll see just about no reference in any of the paperwork in the box. A little bit of smoothing online from one of the InMotion uh, videos. I saw that this is used if you want to convert your wheel to a non-suspension wheel. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Suspensions are the future, <laughs> or they're now. Um, but that's what this is for, so I doubt you guys will ever have to uh, use this. But if you want to, let me show you. Uh, let's see. Some of the, well, first of all, some of the paper that comes with it. Some of these QR codes take you to something that has nothing to do with the V13 website, the, the, like the manual, supposedly. There's no uh, reference to the V13 on this uh, particular website but you can find a little bit of information on it. How to get it, uh, set the transport mode. Uh, I have yet to turn it on, so I'll look at that in a little bit. The manual, yeah, definitely a de decent manual for what it is. Gives you the basics. So that is good. This is the only reference you will see regarding this hardware. And uh, it doesn't really tell you anything. It just basically lists, lists, shows these components and all the associated uh, screws. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you a little bit about how you're gonna, how you would convert this to a non-suspension wheel. It looks probably pretty simple to do. Again, I don't know why you'd want to do that. <laughs> this is the hardware that you get. This is for removing the suspension, the air suspension, uh, either replacing it or removing it if you want to turn it into a non-suspension wheel. Here's the pump they give you. It's probably uh, decent. Let's see. More hardware. Some Allen wrenches. Bags of screws, which again are associated with these things, so you shouldn't shouldn't need any of these. Uh, they give you two of these. These are, are for adjusting the air uh, suspension. Uh, they're identical. They give you two, I guess, since there's two different ones, but you're not going to be adjusting them. At the same time, so you only need one, so you got a backup. That's cool. And I'll show you later. This is how you're going to adjust the angle of the pedals. And uh, that is all the hardware. All right, I manhandled this wheel on top of the table, and I got to tell you, I actually got my wife's help to do this because I'm not going to break my back to get this wheel up here. <laughs> I tell you guys, it's heavy. These things are becoming like motorcycles. <laughs> You're just never going to pick them up at some point. 
anyway, you know, the I was pretty much expecting this. The build quality on this wheel is off the charts, at least uh, first blush, right? Um, it's just, it's impressive as hell. <laughs> uh, if you're definitely, if you are looking for probably the best built wheel going right now, very powerful, etc. cetera, uh, this just is no doubt the way. The tire on this thing is massive. I own all the wheels, or I've owned them all, and uh, this is the biggest stock tire I have ever seen on an electric unicycle yet. It's three inches solid, three inches wide. Uh, all the other wheels are, uh, you know, about two and three quarters inch wide, actually wide. It's a good three inches uh, from the rim to the top of the, to the tread. I mean, it's just massive. The metal on this, the the wheel is uh, massive, tons of metal. I guess that's why this thing weighs a ton. Uh, just really impressive. It's a seven, looks like a 17 inch rim for all you tire nerds. Uh, this tire, it's not a uh, Kenda or a CST. C CST, it's a Y U A N X I N G. Uh, I'm not familiar with that. I'm sure all you tire nerds will hate this tire, but uh, it just kind of looks like an enduro tire, what we're getting in all our wheels. So I'm sure I'll probably like this, but uh, again, a lot of guys will probably be switching this out to, um, to a street tire. But this side is solid now uh, I actually I don't know if this is I don't know if this is a is a metal side actually or or plastic it feels really solid does not zero deflection again raw first impressions I've not uh, done a lot of research on this wheel since I really had no intentions of buying one for my because of my use case uh, so uh, just exudes quality uh, let me pull you in and show you a little detail on the pedal all right the wheel height can be adjusted to three different positions and from the factory it looks like it's coming at the lowest position and you can maybe see that there's um, Two, two additional positions here that these everything can be shifted up. It's not a lot, lot of uh, variation. For instance, on the Master Pro, you have a little over an inch per position, and there's three positions. If I were to guess, this looks like maybe a little over an, an inch total height difference. It's better than nothing, and for these, uh, for these wheels suspension wheels high center of gravity personally i like the wheels in the lowest position this is the dihedral angle that you have and uh, it's advertised as being adjustable but it's only adjustable in two different positions so here's the default and uh, here's the default and this is a little additional height and that's it I'm actually going to go with this so I'll show you how it uh, how you adjust it they give you one of these shims one per uh, side and the screws with Loctite pre-applied And uh, that's it. You just uh, screw it in. Now there's plenty of um, and and there's a whole recess here for the screw head to uh, fit in. So these holes aren't too deep. So I don't. You might be able to get another piece of metal in here. Uh, so it might be 
might be able to get a little more adjustment. Probably not a, a huge amount though. Perfecto. Yeah, this hole really doesn't look very deep. So I have a feeling if you add another shim, it's probably going to push that head out and it's going to hit. But it's something. Let's talk spikes. Well, I don't know, guys. Uh, I'll definitely give you assessment when I start riding this wheel. But these are small screw heads they are very 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 mellow spikes <laughs> i don't think you can call them spikes so they probably provide a little bit of friction uh, i have a feeling we are going to definitely be looking for aftermarket pedals uh, for this wheel i must say i really like this metal uh, Framework it looks like it's identical pieces on the front and the back and uh, It's not tubular like on the Sherman uh, but there are some unused tapped uh, Screw holes there are plenty of um, pass-through holes here and over here so lots of opportunities to be able to attach things to the wheel, including probably um, a good seat on top. So I really, really like that. Time to fill the shock. Now, this is going to disappear rapidly. Uh, this, this is very loose and there's no way to apply any torque. Uh, I suppose if they put a... I think if they'd put a rubber um, gasket here, you'd be able to uh, apply pressure against that and crank it down and it wouldn't come up. But right now, this is gonna, I'll, I'll show you what to do to, so you don't lose this uh, in the future. I'm gonna use this, this pump, which actually, uh, I'm impressed. It's a, it's a nice pump. Now let me show you something that's not really obvious how to use these pumps to minimize how much air you lose. You're still gonna lose air, but the nicer versions of these pumps have this mechanism. And this shaft is what is what actually presses up against the, the valve. And when you loosen this, at like so, this rod now is pulled away from here and you can screw this on you can take your time. You don't have to worry about air coming out. Now, now I screw this down and only at the very end does it engage with the valve. And now I can apply pressure. Now, I've already done this a few times and I can see you lose about I'd say about 30 PSI when you remove this. So I'm going to pump it up to eh, about 240, something like that. And I'm using the chart that's on the side of um, the shell to guide me. Basically, my, my riding weight's about 195 pounds. Of course, play around with this, but uh, now when it comes to undoing this, what you do is unscrew this bottom part. popped out right now this is disengaged from the valve core the valve core is closed so you can take your time you don't have to worry about air coming out the only there it's going to come out is the little bit of pressure that's inside this chamber
and that's it. But that little bit of air that's in there does represent about 30 psi. That's how you use these guys. Now let me show you what I'm going to do about uh, this so we don't lose pressure. I'm going to use plumber's tape. Get this at the hardware store. You won't need a lot of it. Just enough to do about one, one and a half, two reps on top of that. And now this will provide, now it's no longer loose just enough tension. This thing will not come out now. There you go. Before I leave this view of the shock, I did want to talk again about how to convert this to a non-suspension wheel. Again, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but uh, it's a simple process and Emotion does have a, a video that shows it and it's, uh, it's only a few minutes long. Very simple to do. In essence, you're going to be using the supplied tool. You're going to remove the air from the shocks. You're going to use this tool to remove this and this. And there's a screw up on top. These slide out and then you, you, uh, you can put the caps back on I believe. And then you're going to remove, be removing the pedal and the pedal gets removed and then the pedal arm or pedal hanger, I guess, that's this part, gets mounted to a plate down here and you're going to be installing this in its place. And then this gets attached to here with your pedal. And with this plate, I believe that locks everything together to keep everything from moving. So it's, a, it's really a simple process to uh, remove the suspension. Again, don't know why you want to do it, but it's a good option if you want to. Well, it is the next day. Uh, I gave up last night at some point. Well, not gave up, but um, I uh, charged the wheel. I uh, plugged in the stock charger. This, this guy, 5 amp uh, charger, it's nice. And uh, as soon as I plugged it in, I started getting, you know, activate the wheel, activate the wheel, <laughs> coming from the wheel. And uh, so then I had to connect my app to it. Now I have an Emotion app that I used, uh, last time I used it was with the V11 and uh, it would not connect to the wheel. So I had to uh, download another version of the InMotion app and uh, that was able to uh, briefly connect, but um, ultimately unsuccessful because it crashes all the time. And the thing is, what, what, this is one thing I do not like about InMotion, how they handle their apps and their wheel uh, management is that you have to use their app to activate the wheel. To use their app, you have to register it with China, with InMotion, who's in China. Hope their servers are running. You get these uh, cryptic messages. You get a, a pin that you have to, through email, that you have to respond in 60 seconds in the app to get it working. Meanwhile, the Android app is crashing. I have a very modern high end. Uh, Android phone and the app just doesn't function. It launches and, and um, crashes uh, quickly. Fortunately, my wife has an iPhone, so I was able to borrow that, load up the app, and uh, was able to successfully connect eventually. It took about at least an hour of frustra frustration to get it to work. Uh, I, I just really dislike 
wheels that require you to use the app and then have a network connection. You know, you wouldn't be able to do any of this unless you had a uh, internet connection. So I uh, was able to uh, get the charger charging the wheel and in the morning I came out and um, it was fully charged according to the, the green light on this guy. And when I looked on the voltage display on the wheel it showed 123 volts. It doesn't show you fractional volts. Uh, though uh, EUC World, which I use, does connect up to the wheel and it doesn't shows a lot of wrong stuff, but it does show the voltage right now and uh, that does show fractional. So it was uh, 123, less than 123.5 volts. So then uh, I grabbed my S22 charger and I had adjusted the internals on this guy to actually output 126 volts so I can fully charge my S22 because out of the box this also didn't charge S22 fully. Uh, but <clears throat> at least at the very, you know, at the close to 100% charge, it doesn't look like it likes this charger. It would just keep uh, turning off. <clears throat> so then I grabbed my supercharger here. <laughs> I'll have another video about this as I uh, demonstrate how to uh, charge this wheel at uh, hopefully uh, 10 amps. This is my universal fast charger for EUCs. I have a video about it. I'll post a link up here. If you want to get yourself one, it charges any wheel from uh, 1 volt to 140 volts at up to 15 amps. Um, so I set this to 126 volts and charged this. And I, got, I was able to get this up to just basically about 125 volts. And uh, that's as high as I can get it. At this point, I'm assuming the wheel is 100% charged. The display shows 125 volts, but it says 100% charged. I suspect the voltage display, like it is on most of our wheels, they're not calibrated. Now, uh, Veteran allows you to calibrate uh, their uh, voltage display, which is kind of cool. So you fully charge the wheel, and then you change the display to match what it should be. 100.8 volts for the veteran uh, wheels. This it should be 126 volts. Now I understand there is someone that you can contact in Emotion. And I have that information. I'm going to create a separate video about trying that whole process where you fully charge the wheel, you contact this person in China via a, 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 another app, WhatsApp, and, uh, and apparently he can connect to your wheel and make an adjustment to, uh, to uh, adjust the display. Uh, so I'll, I hopefully I'll be able to uh, do that and I'll, I'll put out a little video about that process. Okay, so it's fully charged. I'm not gonna put slime in the wheel. Uh, I, if it were my wheel, I would be putting at least six ounces, six to eight ounces of slime in this huge tire. Uh, instead, I'll just carry a bottle of slime with me in case something happens when I'm up in the mountains. Uh, but um, I have video, separate videos on how to uh, put slime in your tire if you are interested. All right, so the next step is to put this on, put this up, turn it on, and then uh, put the pads inside and hopefully go for a ride. I'm going to install my pads with Velcro. Always put the soft stuff on your, your wheel, uh, which will be compatible with most pads you receive. Sorry, I'm going to have to cover up this in motion label.
This section is indented a little bit, but this Velcro goes on just nice and the pads should be flexible enough to uh, accommodate this little indent. I'm sure the pads, the pads that come with this wheel look look decent. That's for sure. But uh, I think, and I'm sure they would function just like the ones I came with my Master Pro and my Master function for a while. But eventually, you want to get, you just want to get nicer pads. So even if even if you use the stock pads, I would install them with uh, Velcro. Just makes it real easy to reposition everything. doesn't look bad and it'll look great when I get these pads on let me show you what I'm going to put on I have a lot of options available to me for power pads to install but what I'm going to go with today are these new Grizzla flow pads these pads are absolutely beautiful and I love the total functionality all the safety features these are options reflectors and the adjustability which is going to be very important for this wheel since I'm going to be getting the help from some very fast riders to test the high speed performance of this wheel. So with the adjustability of these pads, I will be each person that I give this wheel to for testing will be able to fully adjust it for perfect fit. So I'm just slapping these on temporarily right now, but uh, I'll adjust the final position. And uh, they look like they're holding great, even though there's that um, indentation in here. All right, I just did a little preliminary riding down my driveway, a little bit on the street, just to get a sense for the setup. By the way, by the way, this trolley handle is uh, really not bad at all. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I think it's going to work good. And uh, I like how simple it is to use. Could be a lot worse, tell you that. But, um, so I have the shocks set to about 250. I think I'm going to uh, lower it to maybe about 200 try that it's pretty easy to ch change these things but when i was riding it getting on and and uh you know get going a little bit i know it's kind of a metallic clunking sound a little bit and uh that was some play in the this mechanism and they provide an adjustment for that so right now uh, i i adjusted it and i'm not feels okay to me. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, loosen it to where I think it was and see if, uh, see if you can tell the difference. And I'll show you how, how to adjust it. It's, it's uh, pretty easy to adjust that slop. And uh, that's about it. So let me pull the camera in. All right. In the manual, they tell you that to use included three millimeter or M3 wrench, but uh, my experience is a 2.5 millimeter uh, wrench and there's a hole here and uh, when you get your wheel you're going to see this section kind of covered with a grease so it looks like there's no hole so you just got it and it's only it's not on both sides just one here and the other side of the other wheel so you can stick it in there and feel engaged I'm going to back off uh, let's see one turn two turn, three turn. I think that's about maybe what it was like. I'll do the other side. 
Okay, I'm sure you're not going to be able to see this, but I think you'll hopefully be able to hear the, this kind of a clunking sound. Hear that knocking? And that's what I was kind of hearing when I would uh, launch on the wheel. It would have this, just not a good sound to it. Now in the manual they say over time it'll loosen up and use these to tighten it up. So it looks like uh, either it was loosened at the factory or loosened during the shipping here. <laughs> but easy enough to adjust. All right, now for one of the worst things about this suspension wheel is the adjustments for the rebound. Each side of the wheel has this rubber piece that comes off. It's on there pretty securely. I, I don't think it's going to pop off by itself and you probably shouldn't have to take that off except at the very beginning. So down here you can see that that's a post that this tool fits over and then you turn it and you can turn it with your fingers a little bit but uh, they show you putting a tool through there and turning it but uh, I think a better use is uh, a screwdriver and then you can turn it as much as you need to but what I doesn't make sense to me is that there is no indication of what you're doing I mean it nothing goes in and out as you're turning it it turns counterclockwise or clockwise uh, forever it seems and I would think ideally you'd want to have this side and the other side the same <laughs> so I just don't uh, I don't I don't know how it's how it's even possible and it's really hard to tell what difference this is making I've, I've been making some adjustments and I am not noticing much so I'm just gonna have to play with the, this over the next week as I ride it to see to see uh, what effects I can I can have with it but uh, that's definitely not a great adjustment mechanism okay this wheel is finally fully set up and to ride uh, obviously I'm going to be putting a lot of time writing this to firm up my opinions but I do want to say off the bat that I, I do think the suspension on this V13 even though I have been riding a little bit outside uh, even though it rides nice I do think it's the worst suspension implementation of all the wheels currently being made circa 2022 23 um, it's the same basic design as the v11 and uh, i think this adjustment mechanism for the rebound up top is really awful uh, it's basically impossible to make them both the same you're you're just kind of guessing where you what the adjustment is uh, the bottom part is totally exposed just like on the V11 so if you're going to be riding this on trails and actually I think this might be a, a decent trail wheel unlike the Master Pro uh, you, it's susceptible to damage I mean I, I was damaging uh, for the few hundred miles that I rode the V11 when I was testing that I was damaging that that uh, cap mechanism down at the bottom and uh, I see the same potential on, on this wheel uh, yeah compared when you compare it to the Sherman S the Commander Pro the Gatway series of wheels the King Song um, they're all better in that regards and and definitely the King Song and Gatway the gold approach with the single shock in the back and the linkages is superior. You have the option to uh, on those these wheels to change the shock to something you like, and uh, just easier to adjust, more robust in my opinion. Now, as far as ride quality, 
I'll let you know, obviously, as I ride this. But I did really like uh, the V11 when I rode that. So I'm anticipating good things for this wheel. Uh, let me take this uh, off the stand so I can show you these uh, side by side just for kicks. Well, here you go. Two beast of the wheels. Uh, it's going to be hard comparing this to other wheels. In many ways, it's close to the Master Pro, obviously, because of the size of the tire, the weight. I weighed my Master Pro with including the Clark bumpers, seats, pads, 121 pounds. This guy, as configured with the um, Grizzly pads and nothing else, is 118 pounds. <laughs> so they're pretty much the same weight. Uh, same size tire basically but this actually has a um, well in my mind it's a bigger tire and I've been told um, educated by Ron uh, Ron line up uh, San Francisco way he's uh, been educating me about tires and this has a 16 inch rim master pro has a 17 inch rim Yet this is a three inch wide tire versus a 2.75 inch wide tire. And the amount of rubber between the rim and the ground is, is more on this. But uh, Ron, Ron tells me that a, a larger diameter uh, rim will make for a better carving experience. But this uh, size tire will make for a better off-road type experience, uh, more rubber. Uh, I definitely like this. And a little bit of riding I've been doing out, down out in the street. Uh, this tire rides more like a, a Kenda, I think. It does not seem to have any a sharp edge when you're doing a, you know, like a 180 turn, sharp turn. It doesn't feel like it's gonna, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, roll over like that hard edge you have in a CST type tire. So this wheel, uh, just a little bit I've been riding, riding outside, rides much nicer than the Master Pro, even though it's the same heaviness. I gotta measure the pedals. It seems, seems uh, the center of gravity seems a little bit lower in this wheel for some reason. Uh, but I think primarily the difference in riding characteristics is this, the basic shell is two inches uh, less than the Master Pro. So it makes for a, a really nice uh, riding experience so far from what I have been seeing. So it, there you have it. Now I'm going to do some riding. I'm not sure if uh, this video might be getting long. I think I might uh, just publish this as is and then the next video you see will be me taking this for some uh, Taking it for some rides. And I have some guest appearances. I'm going to, um, thus, I put these uh, Grizzly adjustable pads on. I'm going to invite uh, Don and Roger, some of the fastest riders on the planet, arguably, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, they have volunteered to help me test this wheel for the speed and performance, the raw speed. I have the Top speed set to 56 miles per hour. <laughs> so, and these guys can test it. Uh, I'm not going to test. I'm, uh, that's just not me. I'll be doing the, the more the touring testing, uh, the range testing. I think I'm going to do some trail riding with this based on how it's handling. I, I don't enjoy riding this where I have to do much turning. Uh, the, those. I guess an extra two inches in width really makes a difference compared to this. So I'm thinking this could be a, a fun wheel on some trails too. So uh, look for some uh, interesting videos upcoming. All right, guys, hope this was uh, useful to you. And until next time, safe riding.